iconic status is granted to only a few. For some it can be in recognition of sport and achievement, but for others the title has a wider significance. In 1979, a 22-year-old Spaniard won the Open Championship at Royal Lytham St. Anne's. Seve had arrived and legendary status was inevitable. Today, I walk in the footsteps of my golf hero. And of course there'll be a challenge hole, it's going to be the infamous 16th, where effectively I reckon Seve won that Open Championship in 1979. But go and have a look around first and then join me back here for a man versus golf hole challenge. Classic links design at the third at Lytham, shot I've just played in, then there's a hidden bunker to the right which you can see. You don't see that at all from the second shot in. And then you go left and there's these runoffs and swales that it's what is the difficulty of Lynx golf. It looks fairly straightforward from back there, but believe me, I'm glad to be on that flat stuff. Right, hole seven, asking a few questions off the tee. Uh, four bunkers down the left I can see. I can see two down the right, and there could be a few more in the way. Ah, it's not down the middle. In fact, it's going down the right and we could be in some heavy stuff there. Right behind me is the fairway I was just looking at from the tee, those bunkers to my right now and two to the left. And I wonder what the likes of Seve or any of the pros that play in the Open Championships, what do they think when they're looking down on that from the tee position? Because there is literally no room for error. And then the wind blows as well. It's not easy. bunkers that you've got to avoid is incredible. Uh, we've worked our way down. I'm playing my fourth shot in on this par five and in a way I had to hack out and I'm glad because again you've got four bunkers there that are incredibly steep uh, just waiting to catch you out on uh, what some people's second shot, other people's thirds. But really well designed golf course with uh, plenty of trouble and you can see why it's a tough course around here. That's got to go a bit. Go ball, go. Yeah, just uh, made the front. Seve's ability was unquestionable, but in many ways, it was his waywardness that provided the moments of genius. He was beyond the ordinary and brought so much imagination, charisma, style, inspiration and passion to the game. That's not the best of swings, but I found the middle of the fairway, which is the most important bit, I suppose. 170 in, it's all uphill. There's a mammoth bunker. I think it's the one left of picture. We'll have a look in there in a minute, but I'm hoping I don't go in it. But we'll uh, we'll take a stop off to have a look. But um, yeah, all uphill. So we're clubbing up a bit here, expecting it to take a bit of extra to get up that hill. Oh, do you know what, it's a decent enough shot, but I don't know whether it's got the legs, you know. Go. No, I didn't think so. Sit. Stay. That's on its way back down the hill. I will just play this one out. I pitched somewhere around here, and it was a good club short, but this is where I finished up. 
massive dips uh, and, and swales here. And that bunker that I referred to is actually Greenside uh, to the left. I'm going to have a look at it in a minute or two. But first of all, uh, we've got to master this. Not easy. Go on. Uh, do you know what? It's not bad. I think it was the right type of shot to play. Well, it was for me. I needed a little bit more to uh, make this one a little bit easier. This is one steep bunker. Um, it's got to be, I don't know, that looks about six, seven, eight foot maybe to the top of it. I can see the tip of the flag and we need some Spanish hands. Sevi, come on. Work some magic and stick this one in the hole. Oh, it's not a bad effort, you know. Oh, Sevi. That's got to be of uh, a bit of help from above, I reckon, there. Watching any of the major golf tournaments that they've held here at Royal Lytham, I always remember this par three. It's a great little hole, and again, danger absolutely everywhere you look. And a danger mainly being bunkers, but again, you can see all those big slopes, even from here, that they're all feeding um, away from the green and into one of those uh, what look like fairly deep bunkers. So the question is, can I hit a decent tee shot? on a hole that I've watched on the telly many times, and then you get the opportunity to do it yourself. Again, I've just got off the bottom groove. Has it got enough? Has it got enough? Sit. I was at the flag. It was a bit like I said, out the bottom groove, but it's not bad. I think I might've got a subtle round of applause from the crowd, but only a subtle one. Not a bad roll. Might have got a bit of a new from the crowd. Yep, we'll make a three. The 1979 Open was brutal. Wild winds from the Irish Sea caused havoc. But on that final day, Seve managed to play the notoriously difficult back nine in genius mode and played the last seven holes in one under. I wonder what's going through Seve's mind at this time, 22 year old, and still all to play for at this stage. It was extremely tight. And don't forget the winds were howling. That's right on the line, you know, right on the line, go. Happy with that. I think Seve would have been happy with that one. Difference is it was blowing a bit of a different breeze on that day. Right, the tee shot came up, it was a club short, but I wanted to show you this. Is what I didn't notice from back there again is this massive sort of runoff halfway through the green. So literally probably two yards to my right off the tee, and this happens. You're literally hitting that bank and running straight back off the green. And they're the subtleties of the sort of great course design at Royal Lytham and all the great Lynx Championship venues that you stood on the tee, you don't see these kind of things. It looks a fairly flat plateau. And then when you get up here, you realise in this case, at least anyway, I stayed on the uh, top side and got a bit lucky. I get to play an open championship venue. You just get to experience things that we've seen on telly and you get these kind of they're almost nondescript bunkers you see so many of them littered around the place but again they're like a piece of art uh stunningly maintained but all of a sudden they pop up out of nowhere and uh, again that's you know i mean that's not far off as sort of tall as me and up and down from here and you just got so much admiration for a the people that maintain these things but then b when you see the professionals and how they make this kind of thing look so easy and you get someone average that comes in and all you're thinking is, my God, I just hope this pops up. Oh, hello. That's above average. Sevi, magic hands, Spanish hands. A caddy will earn his bacon on a, on a shift here at uh, Royal Lytham because I've just teed off and uh, I can tell you now when it happens throughout the course, there's a lot of surprises along the way. That little bunker there, hidden away from my tee position. Thank God I've come up short, but there's lots of them. It's a key feature of the round. 
uh, dotted all over the place. And again, we played our hole early. I think it was the third where tee shot into the green and uh, fortunately landed on the green. But what I didn't realize is again, obscured from view was a deep bunker just a few yards to the right and then big runoffs to the left as well, taking your ball away from the hole. And sometimes almost a bit better that you don't know that that danger is there. But like I said, caddy and yardages. And here's an interesting fact for you. In 1979, when, when uh, Seve won that Open Championship, in 72 holes, he only found nine fairways. That's incredible. I think I've found six today. Right, I'm still on the 15th green, and I've got to say at Royal Lytham St. Anne's, it's been absolutely immaculate from start to finish. And I think pretty much, you know, as you'd expect, we're playing an open championship venue. And uh, I thought earlier on on the drive up, you know, if you got the chance, if someone offered me the chance to be Kenny Daglish for the day and go and play at Anfield, I'd just absolutely run at the chance. And that's exactly what we get at these open championship venues. We can play, we can walk in the footsteps of our golfing heroes. We can, everything we've seen on the TV, we can go and have a little crack at it ourselves. And I've got to say, it, it's been a superb venue, immaculate condition, green, superb, uh, runoffs, every piece of uh, cut of rough you can see in terms of definition. It's been fantastic, it really has. But we've got a challenge all coming up and it's the next. And it's the famous hole, the car park hole of Seve. Ooh, greens are too quick. Yeah, not too shabby this place, is it? And it's been an absolute, in, uh, so much enjoyment to walk around. But what a top it is just getting, well, a par would be good. Don't forget Seve birdied this. So the story was, he goes so far right on this tee shot. He was in the car park, the overflow car park takes a free drop by the way he was that far wide that Hale Irwin who he's playing with in that final round question how could he not be out of bounds the response was he picks up an iron he sticks it to 30 foot and rolls in that birdie and we get that famous Seve celebration and fist pump so that's what obviously I need to now do uh, we're playing a little bit blind it's the black and white marker and um, we'll see what lies over there but first of all let's see what happens with the tee shot we're a little bit further forward and we haven't got the breeze they were playing with on that day. Well, I've got on the line it suggested. It's a little bit right. I don't think it's as far right as Seve went. And hopefully I can finish this off. Like I said, a par is what I'm looking for. Right, so I've got 135 in. From what I can make out from the scorecard and speaking to lads earlier, Seve was somewhere over uh, way over to where that it's a lot heavier apparently now than what it was but that was the kind of area he came in from so i found again one more fairway than Seve did uh, but let's see if uh, i can get that ball in close and roll in that birdie like he did into the breeze a bit we look as though we've got a flag tucked in right behind the bunker so do we go on the bowl line or That's the bowl line. Come on, be right, Seve. Be right. Ah, well, it could be just a little bit short. It seems I hang for a little while, but I reckon we've got a chance for birdie. Well, a good uh, club, almost even two clubs short uh, into that breeze. Looks like it swings off quite a bit. The flag when Seve played, it was over that other side. Um, but the result's the same. Do you know how much I want to... Give it that Seve fist pump, but it's a big ask, this. Come on, Seve. Come on, Seve. Come on, Seve. <laughs> Do you know what? Uh, I'm happy with that for a minute. Uh, yeah, I did think I actually had a chance. Uh, and that would have been perhaps a little bit too good to be true. But I said I wanted to make par, and I did. And I'm happy with that, to be fair. The years pass and the dreams fade. Hopes of sporting greatness, well, they've long disappeared. But I'm desperate for a par on the 18th. A huge sigh of relief, my best drive of the day. 
It was only a nine hand in hand, but with the green starting to shrink, I was already aware of the awaiting gallery. Slightly tentative, but so far so good. With a wonder in mind and conscious of the stare, the pressure had got to me. And yeah, I messed it up. A sinking feeling of failure, and then, well, thank you, Sevi. Sevi is a legend. In European golf, he is a messiah. Worshipped by fellow professionals and loved by the fans. Sevi, we miss you.